Shapan, women's Kazakh traditional vest, silk shirt. Everything is perfect. Is there any beautiful garment in the world that can be compared with the Kazakh traditional clothes? Surely not. Refined ornaments, silhouette and patterns of the garment tell about its origin, make us plunge into history. Hello, dear viewers, you are watching Kazakh Live Dastur with Tamara Asar. Today we'll discuss the Kazakh traditional clothes. You're watching Kazakh Live Dastur. A special guest came to our studio today to share his knowledge about national apparel. Our guest is a historian, ethnographer and professor Amanjol Kalosh. He studies the history of the Kazakh people. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. We would like to learn more profound scientific facts to expand our knowledge of the culture and art. What do national garment of the Kazakh people is distinguished for? Why don't we wear clothes of other nations? Every nation has its own traditional clothing, which is suitable for the country's living environment and weather. For instance, in the western, northern and eastern parts of our vast country, where the climate is cold enough, people wear warm, comfortable clothes. It depends on climatic conditions. In Jetosu region, especially in the southern Kazakhstan, it's always warm. Therefore, it's reflected on the people's outfit. The second criteria for choosing garment is household activity economy. Many people wonder why Kazakhs wear such clothes, why do not they wear other clothes? Our culture is imbued with the spirit of nomadic past, which has melded together the diverse art, traditions and lifestyle. It's also related to climate, ecology as well. Therefore, the Kazakhs pay attention to comfortable clothes. The first thing to remember is that clothes are chosen depending on the climate, and the second on the economy. The first thing to remember is that clothes are chosen depending on the climate, and the second, on the economy. Right. Thirdly, some clothes were borrowed from other cultures. There are neighboring countries and cultures that affected our attire. For example, in the western Kazakhstan, it can be seen that people's clothes contain the elements borrowed from the Bashkirs, from the Tatars, especially from the Nogai people. But in the southern Kazakhstan, it's seen that during designing clothes, some Uzbek and Kyrgyz components were taken. Clothing is divided into four parts. This is not about the type of women's, men's or children's clothing. There are underwear, outerwear, headdress, shoes and so on. We touched only types of clothing in Kazakhstan. Now let's pass to the colors of clothes. Due to weather conditions, nomadic people mostly chose brown, red colors of attire. I would like to ask a question. Did the tribes and their culture probably influence the choice of clothing color? Yes, of course. Traditional clothing greatly varies across different parts of the country and is influenced by local culture geographic climate and other facts. For example, in the western Kazakhstan there are about 25 tribal divisions. Some vests, headdress and other apparel belong to a certain tribe, mostly to Kshizhus. Each tribe had its own distinctive style of clothing. In the northern part of the country people say that they wear headwear or an accessory that belonged to Ortajus. 
In Jitusu, Alban Douglad's elements are reflected in the garment. After all, it has been developed from ancient times. Yes, I agree. In other words, each tribe had its own distinctive style of clothing. Diverse patterns, color, and even the shape of the clothes served to identify the cultural, often geographic affiliation of group. Clothes were different. Yes, you're right. The Kazakh people have 43 tribal divisions. 43. Each of them has its own ornaments. In this regard, we can divide the ornaments into four types. That is, open work ornaments are divided into four types. Yes. For example, the most common type of ornament is a zoomorphic ornament, based on the stylizations of various animal forms, for example, domestic or wild animals and birds. The next type includes ornaments in the form of plants. In the southern Kazakhstan and in Jetusul, people lived a sedentary lifestyle. In this part of the region, there were more ornaments of floral design. The third type is cosmogonic ornaments. More precisely, celestial stars, the moon, the sun, planet-shaped ornaments adorn clothing. The last is geometric ornaments. Nowadays, people decorate saukele and vests with ornaments that are mostly designed for patterned felt Kazakh carpet, sermak and tikimet. What do you think about this? It is a relevant issue. Ornaments that are designed to decorate carpets and tikimet should not be patterned on clothes. It should be clear that the ornament must be either geometric, or zoomorphic, or purely cosmogonic. As for men's clothing, ornaments shouldn't be white. The patterns, color of the fabric and ornament should be harmonious. There are two types of clothing. For example, this clothing belongs to people of the upper classes, for rulers and wealthy people. The difference is seen clearly. This Asian clothes are presented in the Central Museum in Almaty. The main feature of clothing is to reflect the social status and condition of a person. A low social status person can afford wearing garments like his ruler does. You shared knowledge about types of clothes for different types of ornaments. Our designers and tailors, artists, should be encouraged to improve their knowledge and plunge into history deeper. Therefore, dear viewers, let's all remember this information that was provided in the program Kazakh Life Dastur. There are some chapons, for example, with the sun depicted on the back side. Only Genghis Khan and his descendants wore such chapon. What should be reflected of the Kazakh chapon? The back side of our chapon shouldn't be decorated with ornaments. Thank you very much for coming to our studio and giving so much information. Let our ornaments decorate clothes and depict an authentic sense of our culture. The Kazakh people inherited rich culture and art, and we must preserve our cultural legacy. There is one more guest in our studio. Aijan Abdubaid is an ethnographer and designer who have preserved the traditional style of the Kazakh national costume and managed to turn it into a modern trend. She will present her beautiful, exquisite garment today. Welcome to the studio. Hello. We're very glad that you brought all this wonderful clothes to the studio. Let me ask you a question right away. It's very interesting. 
there are various contradictory conversations, discussions, that no one has yet combined into concrete arguments and evidence. You are a designer, an ethnographer. Do you think that designers promoting this industry are responsible for presentation of traditional clothing style to the public, to the consumer? Do they realize this? That is, do they understand the concept of traditional dress applying certain ornaments? What do you think about it? You are absolutely right. As a designer, an artist, I pay more attention to technology applied in designing clothes. In general, the Kazakh National Garment conveys its independent concept. It represents a different sphere of art. That is a different sphere. Traditional clothing plays an important role in the country's history and culture. From the ancient times, our ancestors were distinguished with their art of crafts. Nowadays, there are many skilled designers, professionals, who revive our art. I am glad to see their number is growing. Tell us about your collections. As for the technology of traditional embroidery, I have devoted more than 30 years to breathe new life into this art. In ancient times, only sultans, hans, could wear garments with gorgeous embroidery. It's an exquisite art. It requires high skills. Embroidery technology is divided into several sections. Baspa technology is kind of hand embroidery. For example, this is a hand embroidered Baspa technology. Baspa technology means sewing on top or weaving. It is embroidery with needle weaving. Can it be sewn on sewing machine? This is exquisitely hand embroidered. Dear viewers, this is a hand weaving, hand embroidered piece of work. Therefore, as we said, embroidery is an exquisite art. It is a splendid embroidery. It's hard to imagine how much skillful a master should be so that to weave precisely such an embroidery. You're holding a fabric with baspa embroidery. And headdress is decorated with embroidery, applying zir salu or zir leo technology. It is finished with gold and silver braiding. Did you sew with golden threads? Zirde embroidery technology is associated with the metal and gold. Zersalu from Kazakh means to be careful, be smart. It refers to thinking and ability to remember. Therefore, we can conclude that a special attention was paid to Zerleo art and how much the Kazakh people appreciated it. We see how art influences society by changing opinions, instilling values and translating experiences across space and time. It was a forgotten technology, but I revive it for about 30 years. I worked as a member of the Union of Artists. I needed a carpet according to the French technology of tapestry. 
But with the time, I thought that since we are Kazakhs, we must serve our people and the Kazakh art. I began to study the art inherited from my ancestors, revive their crafts and reinvigorate the Kazakh art of embroidery. I'm holding Saukile in my hands. Tell us about this Saukile. From time immemorial, the Kazakh people gave all the best to their children. In particular, special attention was paid to Saukile as part of preparation of gifts for future brides. There is a saying which mentions the price of Saukile, telling it is worth 500 horses. And in my hands, I hold an authentic sample of Saukile wrapped in silver and decorated with gold-stitched embroidery. Must this headwear be cone-shaped? Yes. It is high, the crown is slightly visible. Please, can you tell us about this Saukile? I brought this Saukile to the studio to showcase how craftsmen breathe new life into the Kazakh Asian art. After gaining independence, the Kazakh people preferred pure, genuine art. They began to choose authentic hand ornaments. Zirleo embroidery, decorate clothes with silver like this, so kile. I have one more question. What height should Saukile be? It depends on the bride's height, on her figure. More precisely, the size is determined from the elbow to the fingertips of the bride, according to craftsmen. Thank you very much, Aizhan, for coming to our studio and sharing detailed information about the traditional garment. When you see such a wonderful Saukile, you are really happy that our art is revived. I wish our traditional Kazakh art conquers new frontiers. We continue Kazakh Live Dastur with Tamara Asar. Today we saw refined samples of the Kazakh traditional art. People are proud to have such heritage that is represented in the traditional garment, ornaments or patterned dresses. People respect their national values. But there is one problem. We don't wear traditional clothes in everyday life. Of course, in some regions, particularly in Mangastau region, people wear a traditional outfit in everyday life, on holidays. There are women and girls who wear beautifully embroidered vests with ornaments. But in the northern regions, women don't wear a traditional outfit in the ordinary life. Today, we invited a guest who wears traditional clothes everywhere. Perizat is a journalist who contributes to the development of the Kazakh traditions and art. She promotes wearing traditional Kazakh clothing among women. Welcome, Perizat. You came with your children. Thank you.
Indeed, Perizat with the aim to preserve our national art wears traditional clothes every day. Perizat, do you want to surprise someone or do you want to look special? Why do you always dress like that? Everyone says that I want to attract attention, so that people talked about me. But I hadn't such a goal. I faced some difficulties in financial terms. After all, it was necessary to order an outfit from tailors. Now that I have become financially stable, I look for designers to sew a unique traditional garment. Pirizat, it turns out that your inner desire was followed by problems. Consequently, wearing the Kazakh national clothes in everyday life is expensive. That is, everything depends on money. When I started to dress like that, everyone told me that they would also like to purchase wear traditional outfits. But not all of this clothes are sold in the shops. Someone couldn't afford wearing such garment because of high cost. Indeed, Kazakh traditional clothes are expensive nowadays. Since ancient times, the traditional attire of the Kazakh people was divided into several categories. A jacket is worn in simple, everyday life. A chapan is intended for holidays or when someone wants to be well dressed up. Pattern traditional vest was intended for a walk. Thus, you propose that everyday traditional clothing is soon at affordable prices. Yes, definitely. I don't know why people think that traditional clothes are worn exclusively during the celebration of Nauris or on family holidays. In addition, when you wear something like a vest, people laugh at you. After all, I don't wear it to show my good social status. I want to revive and demonstrate the art that we inherited from our ancestors to preserve national identity, but not to be the object of ridicule. What is the baby wearing on? A coat or a vest? How is it called? We call it chapan, but it is designed in modern style. We cannot extend the vest to the foot because it's uncomfortable for the child. But we designed it with ornaments. As for the outfit, we decided with a tailor to combine the chapan with patchwork ornaments. For example, she loves Harry Potter and wants to have such a magical robe as Harry Potter. Let me see. I guess it's like Harry Potter's sleeve. Patchwork design, there is a small ornament with a bell. Wonderful. Isn't it cold? No. Tamara, do you like it? Is it comfortable to wear? She wears it at school. Everyone is stunned. There were people who stopped in the street and took pictures with her. My daughters are happy to wear these clothes. When the Kazakhs sew a patchwork quilt or clothes, it reflected self-development. Patchwork clothes meant the beginning of new life. In particular, when two people marry, they create their own hearth. A patchwork quilt was soon specially for them, so that their family grows and becomes stronger. Also, pieces of fabric were sewn onto clothes, so that to protect a child from evil eye. Sometimes a patchwork quilt meant a union of people and was soon especially for a child, so that he is healthy and unites everyone around. Fine. Bless you. We sewed this outfit with patchwork patterns so that she united her sisters and brothers. It's wonderful. May she unite relatives and be friendly with her little sisters and brothers. Amen. I wish our Kazakh people will be strong and united. Watch Kazakh Live Dastur with Tamara Asar next time.